you wouldn't be so stubborn about this. I should be right beside you during the press conference. I might even be helpful. When reporters are firing questions at two people, you double the chances of tripping up. You're treating me like a child. You know that, don't you? I am not treating you like a child. I am very concerned that this thing can be over with and done with very quickly, and I don't trust reporters, and only one person answering questions gets us better odds of that happening. Uh, hello. Sorry. Oh, hi. hi. I didn't hear the bell. Well, we didn't ring it. Mrs. Dodd was outside cleaning the front door, and she just let us in. Hmm. Are you ready for the onslaught? Well, Luke has decided to handle the press conference himself. Oh? I just feel that one person can control it better than two. It's got to be controlled. After you called and told us what happened yesterday, we've kept our ears wide open. What did you hear? Oh, people are speculating all over town. There's guessing games going on everywhere. That's why the conference has to end this matter once and for all. You mean they're starting to talk already? Oh, sure, of course. What would you expect, honey? A Cassidine dies in the home of Luke and Laura Spencer. The gossips are going to have a field day. And the one way it is to have the conference, tell your story, and stick to that story forever. I know. I know. I'm ready. Lee? Hello, Luke. I think we're ahead of the horde, aren't we? You are, Robert. Uh, there's no change in plans. Uh, well, the plans are about the same. I got a call from the television stations. They wanted live coverage of the conference. Thank you. I told them that uh, we didn't have time, and I really didn't have room in here to set up for them. They accepted that? They did when I agreed to do an on-camera interview following the conference out back. There is one other change. What's that? I've convinced Laura to let me handle this alone. As a matter of fact, she's upstairs with Leslie, and uh, she's not even going to make an appearance. I think that's wise. Well, I agree. I mean, there's much less chance of conflicting stories that way. Yeah. Good. Robert, that you got here early. You were in the castle, aren't you? Well, not since Helena hung up on me yesterday. Has the body arrived on the island? Not as of half an hour ago. Boy, that timing bothers me. They're going to get Stavros's body before they find out about this press conference. Hmm. I've got a much bigger worry. What if this press conference doesn't work? Well, we're all concerned about that. All we can do is hope that Luke is able to control those questions. Well, I've got to try. We have no other choice. And then, hopefully, they'll print my story and the Cassidines will read it and give up. And that's a tall order. They've never given up before. like no matter what I do or where I go, one thing seems to always follow me. What is it, Laura? Death. It's not true. It just feels that way right now because the Cassidites haven't left you alone. Do you think that they ever will? Right now. Even as we speak. It is coming to an end. I don't know. It's just there's so many reminders, you know? Especially in this room. Yes, I do know. But that'll pass. I hope so. I couldn't sleep at all last night. I woke up you know, three, four times and I just kept seeing the whole thing happening again. <laughs> but I have learned. You may not believe it now, but bad memories really do fade in time. I hope you're right, Mom. That's all I want. It's just to be happy with Luke. I mean, that's all I've ever wanted. Well, that's good because right now you're stuck with it. You've got him and you have this incredibly wonderful life to look forward to. <laughs> you know, you have such 
a wonderful way of making everything seem like it's going to be all right. And I know that we had some hard times, but I just love you so much, Mom. I'm so glad you're my mother. <laughs> well, that's good. Because I do love you, Betsy. 